Hey everybody, Wally Renee here from the Mod Institute. Welcome to this short clinical guide on how to design an anterior tooth in FanCAD Premium. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to go to the Mod Institute website and on this clinical guide you're going to download the sample case as a zip folder. And you're going to load that case into Romexis. So let's do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Romexis. And you're going to go ahead and add a patient. And I'm going to put a random ID here. I'm going to call this Mod Institute. Um, let's call this Premium. Tooth number eight. And so once you have the patient data entered in, you're going to go to your CAD CAM module down here. And it's important to not unzip the file when you download it. You want to keep it in its native zip state. And you're going to go to import CAD CAM case. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and find that download. For me, it saves on my desktop on my actual, actually it doesn't say my desktop. It saves under my downloads folder. And it saves under this file name veneer11. You have to keep it that native file name. <clears throat> and so once it's loaded in and you've selected that folder, you're gonna hit import. Now, what it's doing is it's basically transferring all the data from the zip file into the Romexis directory. And it's gonna be as if I scanned it natively into the software. So, I mean, technically you could go on and design and plan CAD easy at this point, or you could design and plan CAD premium. So let's go ahead and once this is done loading, it does take a little bit of time. We're going to go ahead and highlight the case and you'll see it right up under here in case name. You'll see uh, veneer eight. <clears throat> and so we're going to hit okay. So here's the veneer eight. Now notice what I have up my menu bar here and you can reach out to plan Mecca support if you have plan CAD premium to make sure that it's included into your menu bar. So I have it right here. I have my plan CAD premium dongle in place. It's all been properly installed on my laptop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this once, not twice. If you click it twice, you're going to open plan CAD easy. And I'm going to click plan CAD premium. And that's going to go ahead and launch my plan manager. Now here's the tricky part. A little window pops up down here in the bottom right. And you got to click view and dental database and click OK. If you don't get that, you won't transfer the file over. So once again, rewind and look at that. There was a little pop up window down here with a little pink icon link. You have to click that and if it's only up for a few seconds. So if you miss it, you're doomed. Um, you have to redo the process. <clears throat> OK, so this is actually a crown. So let's click tooth number eight and go ahead and call this anatomic crown. Um, and let's go ahead. We, uh, we did scan a pre-op model. So scan pre-op model. Yes. Okay. And we did not scan gingiva separate. We do not want to design a gingiva and all these are default for Emacs. So we're going to leave it as is for Emacs. We're going to go ahead and hit save and open up plan CAD premium. Now what it's going to do is immediately when it opens up, because we, we selected pre-op, it's going to ask you, is the pre-op model aligned appropriately to your prep model? So if you look up here, we have antagonist, jaw, pre-op, and bite alignment. We have basically all the stuff that we scanned in Emerald S. And so um, let me show you shortcuts to, to, to be able to view things real quick on the keyboard. P, if you click it, is your pre-op. You can see it kind of come on there and it is aligned appropriately. Um, and this is asking you, is it aligned appropriately? Let me just say, let's say it's not, let's say it comes in like this. And this is the pre-op by the way, because in plant CAD easy, I would, I did a mirror image of this tooth and you can look at that tutorial if you're interested, but in order to do the mirror image of this, you need it in the pre-op library. So I scanned it twice or uh, kind of had two scans. But let's say it did come in um, not aligned. Um, what you could do is you could basically go to this automatic alignment and it's really easy. You click one point, as many points as you want that are coincident on each mesh. 
and then you go ahead and perform alignment and then hit best fit matching. And what the best fit matching is going to do is going to kind of settle that down to where it's perfect. You'll see that occur after it goes through the algorithm here. So you see how right now they're a little bit off. It's going to make it perfect. And so blue means perfect. That's awesome. And I'm going to hit next. But they came in perfect because they came in natively from the Emerald. This is where like if you guys, like if you all are sending to a lab, PlantCat Premium is full-blown lab software. But if you if you scan like a temp and then you scan your prep and the bite and everything, and the lab calls and says the 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 temp is not aligned to your prep, so I can't use it or whatever. That's crazy because it's so easy to be able to pin it just like we just did to get it to align. So the next thing it's asking you is um, to, to edit the scan data. So let me turn off my antagonist. Let me turn off my pre-op. So I'm just looking at my prep scan right now. And I don't really need to edit this because I don't have a lot of flash, but let's just say I wanted to get rid of this. All you do is click and circle, okay? And then you can hit delete. So that's kind of one thing that you could do to edit a model. Another thing is, let's say you had like a floater. I don't have a floater here to show you. I'll make a floater. How about that? Let me go in here and delete this. So now I have this like stuff floating out here that, that you want to get rid of. Uh, maybe it's over on the cheek side or whatever. What you could do, kind of a fast way to do it, is in your uh, wizard here, you could click um, select by clicking on surface. And so what it's going to do when you click that, it's going to highlight everything that's connected to this model, but nothing that is not connected. Then what you could do is you could hit invert. And that then switches to these floaters, and then you hit delete. So that's a fast way to delete floaters. What else can you do? Let me, let me make a hole. Let's pretend there was a hole. I don't know. Let me switch to select straight through real quick um, and hit none to reset. So anytime you have something that you selected accidentally like this and you want to reset, just hit none. But let me make a hole in the model. Let me delete that. Let's pretend that you were scanning and you had a hole. Maybe it was on a more critical surface, but anyway, a hole. And you want to get rid of that hole. The way that you could kind of heal holes is by circling around the hole and hitting close hole. So that's kind of cool. Let me show you um, one application of that that, that has clinical relevance. Um, I, I, I think what I'm going to show you is how to delete a, a, a tooth um, right now. So sometimes it's really easy to get these kind of like where you accidentally do things. Remember, make sure just hit, to hit none. But let's go ahead and delete a tooth really quick. Let me just delete this this molar. Let's pretend we're going to do an immediate implant placement here or something. I don't know. I'm just showing you the features of the wizard. So I'm going to circumscribe that tooth. Now I could do it in sections. So I could come here and do that part and then I could right click and rotate and I could come and do that part and then I could come and do that part. Now what's cool is if I hold down shift and hold it down I could actually remove areas. So if I come in here, hold shift down and circle an area, I'm removing areas that I selected. But let's just call it that. I'm gonna go ahead and go to delete. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna circle all the way around here, make sure it's all orange all the way around, and I'm gonna hit close hold. See? It literally deleted that tooth and created this uh, kind of smooth area. Okay, so I'm going to hit next. You guys, you could do that to practice, but it's not necessary for this case, obviously. So now it's saying, and this is kind of, uh, this is kind of important. And it's saying that due to scan data and accuracies, there's an intersection occurring. It's uh, 125 microns. So what I would do in this particular case, because we are going to use the virtual articulator, I'm going to remove the intersection. I'm going to hit fix by cutting away. And it's going to find that triangle that was extruding through the adjacent tooth and it's going to chop it. 
okay? It's gonna cut those intersections. Um, if I was doing an occlusal guard, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't. Because the it, it kind of grinds a little bit of the, of the interferences out of the way. And if you were doing an occlusal guard and you were trying to fit it on that surface, it might not fit. But since this is a prep and this is the only thing, this is not even close to hitting in the mouth, then if it did a little bit of this grinding to equilibrate the model down, I don't have any concerns with how the outcome is going to be on this. So now it's asking me to draw the margin. Now this did transfer over from PlanCAD easy. Okay. Um, so you could just hit next, but then that would kind of defeat the purpose. So we're going to clear the margin. And it still kind of gives you this ghost of what the margin was from PlanCAD easy. And we have a few options. There's detect, which detect you basically click several points along the tooth and it tries to find it for you. I find this highly annoying. Um, I don't really like the detect. There is under the correct draw, there's this draw tab and then you have magnetic. Uh, let me clear first. Magnetic is just like lasso on PlanCAD Easy. So it's trying to find the line. I don't really like this either because it only finds it really when the finish line is already blatantly obvious. So I'm gonna clear that. I just like good old draw and that is the equivalent to trace. Now, if you're looking at this, there's a couple, a couple different ways to change the color. One is you could go over here, color texture, and just look at the stone. Um, but nobody, I mean, it depends. You could toggle back and forth between color and stone, just like you can on PlanCAD Easy. The other way is to go to tools and you could go to Magic Lantern. And where is it? You get this little box somewhere, find it. It's this little box. And that changes like where the light source is coming from. So you can see as I move it, I'm getting the different color. Now what's cool is if you go down to more and you go down to special, you could brighten this thing up. Let me jack up that ambient light. You could you could change uh, the shine, um, diffuse lighting. There's a lot of different kind of things that you could move play with. And in addition, if you like a certain light, you could lock it in by hitting moving off that moving, and then you could just move that out of the way. And now you have a certain kind of color aesthetic. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark my margin using draw. And I have this magnetic off, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, yeah, make sure that's off. I'm gonna go all the way around here. And what you see with this kind of little window is it's showing you your curvature of your, of your surfaces. And you're looking for that hard line, the apex of the curve. So you can see I'm right on the apex of that curve. And we're good to go. Once you seal the deal, you'll automatically be able to drag these balls and edit them. And you can basically drag unlimited amount of balls. You gotta be careful with color. Sometimes it's deceiving. Like you might look at this and be like, oh, I think it's down here, but it's not. If you turn off the color, Oh, and the reason why it's bright when you turn off the color now is because we did this magic lantern thing um, where we changed the settings. If I pop that off, you'll see it, it tones it down. But you can see how the light reflects right along that line there. Okay, very good. We have our margin marked. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and next follow the wizard. So the next step is it's basically asking you to pick the path of insertion. You know, if, if you rotate it, you'll start to see red undercuts show up. And it usually does a really good job at picking the, the best default path of insertion. But go ahead and rotate it around, play with it. You basically want to minimize a little bit of this red undercut here. You don't have to get rid of it all. You could have some undercuts in your preps that will automatically be blocked out. But the idea is you want to be looking straight down this tooth and see the full thickness of your finish line all the way around. So not like this, not like this. 
red indicates an undercut. Mm -hmm. This orange indicates that based off of this path of insertion, you're going to have interferences with the adjacent tooth. You won't be able to see it. Okay, so it's kind of that's helpful, especially for bridges. So I'm going to go ahead and lock it in at this view by hitting set from view. Okay, I'm going to hit next. Now it's asking me, okay, to pick my cement gap and my margin ramp, just like I'm playing cat easy. So uh, cement gap defaults to 0.8, which is perfect. Um, if you're doing Zerk, you might want to decrease it a little bit, but look at how it's live. So as I increase it or decrease it, the gap automatically is expanding and contracting this yellow area based off of my uh, cursor movements here with my gap. Now, margin ramp is this green area, and it's the same rule I have for all mills, really. Margin ramp, I want to be half the thickness of my margin. So if I have a one millimeter shoulder, I'm going to pick a 0.5 margin ramp. That's just me. That's what works for me all the time, consistently well, and I love that. It leads to perfect fits. One of the issues if you put a margin ramp that's too too fat, let's say it's you know 1.6 or something, this area is more likely to bind upon seating because the margin ramp here, so this zone from margin represents an area of tight cement gap. Okay, so if I go to my tools and I go to uh, sectional view and I add a, let me, let me add a plane um, and drag it. Let me change the angle here. Oh, let me try the original slider. Here we go. Let's look and see what it's doing. So you see we have gap being generated and then like almost no gap generated. So you're more likely, especially if you have a swirly prep with some undercuts to get stuff binding. Um, if your lingual wall is undercut and your margin ramp happen to go into your lingual wall, you get binding right here. Issues like that. So I like my cement gap to extend halfway down to my margin. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 0.5 here. Okay, so that's cement gap and margin ramp. Let me get rid of this slice view here. Now you can add additional zones that are custom. Like let's say you had a weird area. I think I have a weird area here on this prep. Bunch of weird areas, but let yeah, let like they, hmm. you can't really see it well here. Let me go back to the facial. Yeah, like let's say you had a divot or something, that just little swirly area that you didn't really like. You could come in here to the paintbrush. You could add another zone paintbrush, paint that area, and then you could bump it out more. So it, and it's hard to see here. I'm going to come from the side view. This is just now affecting this zone. Whatever I painted, whatever I put here will be that zone. Looks like I accidentally painted down here too, guys. Um, so let me reset that. I don't know how I got paint down there. It's odd. But like I said, paint an area and you can specifically affect that one area. Maybe you wanted a little bit more block out on your incisal edge. Bump that up. Okay. Sky's the limit on customizations here. Border. The So we went from gap to now border. Border represents kind of... The easiest way for me to explain it is as you're following along with your explorer on the route it's kind of the CEJ emergence profile. So how much of a click do you have out? Now, a lot of people complain that they feel like their margins are too bulky. Well, that's oftentimes determined by these border numbers. If you put everything to zero, you're going to have like almost no gap, no bump whatsoever. The issue with that is number one, shipping in the mill, but number two is that's really only the best value for like no prep veneer or a very conservative veneer. I usually like a tiny bit of horizontal. Now this angle here, I like to keep pretty low here. This first angle, the second, because the first angle determines basically your horizontal angle out. The second angle I like to put around 30. Okay, 
And then the vertical represents kind of how high this protected area is going to be uh, before the crown starts to get built. So really when you design, the crown is actually built not from your margin, it's built from this green line up. This is kind of a sacred zone that you can't really smooth or jack with. It's, it's a protected area. I like it to come kind of so if you look at this vertical angle, this is how much of that is kind of protected that you can't really mess with. So for me, I like at least 100 microns. Okay. And then, like I said, this angle here is this angle here. It's only really appreciated when you have these two angles together. So you can see now, you can see the changing of this angle. When you have it this turned all the way off, this angle doesn't really have much of an effect. Okay. I don't mess with this below margin um, here because you don't you don't want this would could lead to seating issues if you drop it back down from below the margin. So I never have that on. So once again, uh, horizontal. If you want no bump, you put it put it around 0.1, vertical around 0.1, and the angle here doesn't really matter at this point, and you're good to go. You're gonna have no bump out of the margin, but you could potentially, especially if you had uh, thin areas, chippage. Undercuts, this is just kind of, I don't mess with this. It's gonna block out undercuts by default. And I'm leaving my funky parameters there just because. Okay, so the first step here is you get this generic tooth. Now, um, I don't like how this is opaque here, so I'm going to go to my jaw scan and I'm going to get it to where it's not where it's uh, I'm sorry, where it's not translucent and more opaque. So you have kind of this tooth, and this is kind of like the plan tab in Plan Cat Easy. And what we're going to do here is we're going to go, I don't like this generic library. It doesn't really matter because we're going to eventually be mirror imaging this anyway, but I'm just going to pick HD here. It's a little bit more triangle, kind of like this uh, native tooth. And what you have here with the single unit design is you have a few hotkeys. One is control. If you hold control, it rotates the tooth. Okay. Once again, I don't like how it goes um, translucent there. I'm going to try to put that up. Cool. So control rotates the tooth. Okay, so remember how in PlanCAD Easy you have like translate, rotate, and, and size, resize. It's the same thing. So control is rotate. Shift is resize. And then just clicking it moves it. And then kind of another one that's kind of funky is this control shift at the same time. It grows it in like whatever dimension that arrow is coming from. Okay, so like longer like wider kind of stuff like that. But what you're going to do is you're going to get that, like if you were designing this without uh, cloning it and you're not going to clone it, I would probably come in here and thicken that out a little bit. Rotate that like that and get something like that. Okay. And hit next. By the way, you could change the library and you can play with it if you want. Um, this software just does a really good job. Now, notice I have no bump out. This is going to be super smooth. You might want to slow the mill down to 80% speed uh, if you're milling Zerk. Emacs, yeah, you'll probably be fine. Okay, so now, once you advance on, you have these freeform tools. So you have freeform, which is basically your add, remove, smooth, flatten. Um, so what's cool about add, remove, and I'm going to put my strength all the way up, and my brush size small. If I hold down shift, it's going to remove. So maybe I want it to accentuate this depression here, like that. If I don't hold down shift, it's going to add. So maybe I want to accentuate the lobes, okay, like that. If I um, go over to this smooth flatten, smooth is if I don't hold down um, anything. Flatten is if I hold down shift. Uh, Shift. Shift will flatten things pretty aggressively. You can see there. I'm going to undo that. Um, there is this kind of 
different size brushes like this little paintbrush gives you more fine control so like you could come in and you could maybe add smaller anatomy features you could also uh, like i said hold shift and add we're getting into uh, some min thickness issues and then you could go back to your smooth tool put your regular brush on kind of smooth those out a little bit not that this guy has this anatomy um, but i've just shown you some of the tools so then you got this other feature. This is like rubber tooth or move where, but it's kind of preset sizes. So essentially, you know how um, basically on rubber tooth, you have the ability to change with the bubble up here, like how much you're affecting and find kind of easy. Premium, they kind of default. So there's cusps, which represent little portions, tooth parts, which is like half the tooth, ridges, which are tiny. Like if you just want to do this corner, okay. And then the entire tooth, you could basically move the whole tooth, okay? But it keeps it sucked down to the margin. This is not the time to make huge changes. Uh, if you wanted to make huge changes, you should have did it back in the kind of the stage where you could move the tooth and rotate it and translate it like I was showing you. Okay, so those are kind of the, the tools there. Now, there's this adapt. Let me, so hit A to turn on your antagonist. And... Go up here to your color icon here, and you have your antagonist, and you have now the ability to, instead of show intersections, show contacts. And you want to turn on your adjacents here. And what we're going to do, we're not hitting uh, yet on this, so I'm going to go to my anatomy here, my tooth parts. I'm going to stretch this out to hit so you can see. Okay, so now we have heavy occlusion here. There's a few ways to adjust occlusion. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you really quick how to do it. And then we're going to go ahead and go to expert mode, put this in the articulator, and then do dynamic articulation. And actually mirror image this too. <clears throat> but so let's go through this real quick. So there's a couple different things here. One is make sure antagonists and adjacents are clicked. Show intersections is not the colors that I like. I like show contacts because then it almost aligns with plant get easy. For show contacts, the color that you want, I'm gonna to go to this adapt here. I'm gonna hit cut intersections. This is the color you want, blue. Okay. If I go to show intersections, it's gonna show nothing. Blue is the color that you want, but you want it to be under show contacts. If I have it under show intersections and I have blue, Oh, let me just get blue. You're going to be grinding all day. So for me, it's under show contacts. I want to go ahead and adapt and cut intersections again, and it's going to cut that to blue. Same thing with my interproximal. So I'm going to hit S to turn my upper model off. I'm going to hit A to turn my antagonist off. By the way, so you have P for pre-op, S for the model you're working on, and then A for antagonist to turn them on and off. Here we have some broad proximal contacts here. I'm going to go ahead and go to a proximal here and cut intersections. This kind of whole oasis green color is the color that you want. And then it, it kind of created this concavity. So what I'm going to do is put a freeform through smooth, smooth flatten, and I'm just going to smooth around it real quick, just like that. That's perfect. Now, if you go to show intersections, it's going to show nothing. Uh, okay, it has a speckle. These might be a little heavy. Um, maybe I would minimize them just like that. So maybe there's smaller speckles under show intersections. I do like quite tight contacts though. So here's show contacts. Once again, it's this kind of oasis color. Now you could set that. So when you go to adapt, you could pick, you know, the strength. Maybe you want it negative. Cut intersections. Make it more. Now, one thing that you want to notice here is that you also have this disc cutter. So let me turn on my model. Disc cutter is really good for bridges because sometimes like if you have a, a long span bridge and you have a certain angle of a proximal contact, like maybe it's the, maybe the distal tooth, the distal proximal contacts angle, you want to follow that angle. Disc cutter only cuts where the disc is hitting. So 
I mean, you could do some severe damage here. Like if I have it like this and I hit cut, it's going to actually obliterate that. So do you see what it did? It put a diastem in there because that's where my, what you see is what you get. So I'm going to undo that. See, I don't really use disc much unless it's a long span bridge or like it's an implant restoration and it's a pathic draw issue. So that's when I use the disc. Okay, I usually just do cut intersections. I don't usually do shape preserving adaptation for anything. I don't like the way it works. It looks. It, it, so I usually just do cut. And basically that's a Boolean operation where it just Booleans the surface out based off of the shape of whatever it's touching. Um, what else? So that's kind of that. Okay, so we've got over that. Now let's let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and mount this. So in order to mount this, because we called it a digital impression, it doesn't default to it. You have to go to expert mode. Don't freak out. It's okay. Tools. Start articulator. Now, everything's like upside down and backwards. Do not worry about it. What we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, position automatically. And let's turn, hit S to turn that off, hit A to turn on your antagonist. And it's, and even if it's backwards like this, it doesn't matter. You could, I mean, you could sit here and hit control and like, oh, you, sorry guys, I accidentally hit cancel. So I'm gonna go to back to re-articulate models virtually. You could hit control in here and, and, and like try to rotate this and position it. And by the way, if you wanted to get rid of you know, your objects browser is still back here, so you could turn off your full anatomic and minimum thickness and all that, or just leave it because it's not affecting anything. But I will say I do like my jaw scan um, off, so I hit S. I want my I want my lower visible here, so my antagonist visible. And what I'm going to do now is go to automatically position and I'm going to set a point on the incisal edge right here between 24, 25. Mesial buccal cusp with the distal most tooth that I have scanned. So right here that represents there. I'll hit perform alignment. And what it did is it, did is it set this on this triangular curve here at the appropriate distance based off of averages. <clears throat> and then I can hit OK. So now I have it positioned correctly. I'm going to turn back on my um, jaw. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead through here and hit start articulator movements. Now this is also where you would open the pin if you wanted to, like for a vertical dimension case. Oh, remember I extracted that tooth up here, so that's not going to affect the movements. It's okay though. <clears throat> okay, so now it went through some dynamic articulation. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to go jump right back to my wizard. And what you'll notice now is I have extra options here. I have all of these things. So we have a few th new things. I'm going to turn uh, A for turn off my antagonist. I have all these things highlighted. Okay. So now if I hit cut, adapt, cut intersections, and I have this dynamic button here selected, what it's going to do, it's going to cut everything. But here's the issue. Look at what it did. So if I turn back on um, my antagonist, it included this protrusive movement that's like six feet out past edge to edge. And maybe you want to go that dramatic with your cutting, but I usually don't like to. So what I like to do is actually, I'm going to undo that. Let me turn on this like this. I like to turn all of this off. Okay. My retrusion, lateral retrusion, protrusion, and my dynamic, all that's off. Turn off my adjacents for now. We're just fo focusing on MIP here. And I like to actually, we're under show contacts. I like to actually go ahead and slide this and look and see what it's doing. Okay. So you see that? I could go through protrusion right now. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my free smooth flatten. Now, I actually really enjoy customizing this manually with this smooth flatten, shift down, and blue. And I'm going to go as far as I think is relevant to this patient's excursive movements. Okay, So I could turn that on my antagonist. I don't think the patient's ever going to get beyond that. Good. Same thing now in lateral extrusion left. So what it's doing, if you look, uh, sliding. I want to make sure I have disclusion pretty rapidly during my lateral extrusion, so I'm not interfering with those. And then retrusion doesn't really matter for this case. So basically, it's just a protrusive thing. Perfect. Back into MIP here, I'm just going to go ahead and shift that a little bit right there. Get that a little lighter. Add remove. Yeah, I like that. Now, that's cool and all, but I don't like this design. I, I want to mirror image this. How do we do that? Well, it's easy. Go to expert mode. Click on that um, and go to mirror copy tooth. Let me cancel that, I went too fast. So once I get rid of my pre-op, make sure it's not highlighted, and I do the same thing, mirror copy, mirror, click that. Now, I'm gonna hit yes. Now I get, bro, I had it back on again. That is hilarious. See, it pops it back on. I'm going to hit P to get rid of that. Now, <laughs> once again, make sure that pre-op is not on there. Now you get the cool mirror feature where you could literally drag it over. You just hit yes. And literally now you get like this. It's just like in Planet Cat Easy. You get this skin where you could actually shift, control, and rotate this sucker right in place just the way that you want it. Okay. I'm so happy that we had that, guys, because we kind of all learned together on that. That uh, pre-op just pops up automatically whenever you hit copy or mirror anything, <clears throat> and you have to get rid of it, especially if you're wanting to mirror from your prep scan and not a pre-op, because it doesn't let you mirror from a pre-op. Beautiful. Loving that. Okay. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go back to my wizard mode. And now look where we are. Don't worry about the margin yet. It'll do that at a later step. In fact, we'll redo all these kind of steps here. Got my dynamic articulation. I'm going to go ahead and go to adapt, cut intersections. Oh, see how it cut the incisal edge? It's because I had dynamic here. I wanted to, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to click static instead and cut intersections and now it's only going to cut MIP freeform smooth flatten and I'm going to kind of flatten holding shift oh. add remove kind of get rid of some of these heavy con contacts here like that now I'm going to go through my excursives see how I start to get heavy here I want it guiding, but not super heavy. Want a little bit of guidance here. No bright green, okay? Uh, starts to get a little bright right there. Perfect. Oh. I doubt the patient's going to go out this far, but I'm just going to go ahead and minimize that. Because if you if you look, that's way, way out there. Beautiful. Hit next. I have the ability now to rotate, move, and scale. I don't need to. Now it's going to suck down to margin. Perfect. I still now have the ability again to make, oh, I have this patient stuck out in protrusion. 
I have the ability again to smooth and rotate and move parts and pieces if I wanted to. But once again, this is a mirror image. I see that it's doing something a little funky over here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my freeform smooth flatten, hold shift, and I'm going to flatten that. Yes, I'm getting a minimum thickness bubble, but that is okay. It's looking good. Put on my true smile here to turn it a little bit more two colored. Now I didn't do my adjacent, so I'm going to turn my adjacents on. I'm going to hit S to turn off my model and look and see what my proximal contacts are. They look great. Um, if I had any concerns, like let's say they weren't great, let's say they were like that, <clears throat> adapt proximal cut intersections. <clears throat> That's that easy. I'm loving this. Let's hit next. Because we had told the computer that we had a pre-op model, it automatically would go to this and say, do you want to adapt to model T? So <clears throat> basically what it would do if I said yes, is it would explode because it's going to, it's going to, it would try to copy the crown prep underneath. Like it, this would be like, if you didn't want a mirror image and if you had a good scan of the tooth before it was prepped and it was intact, in this case it wasn't intact. Um, came broken and you could actually copy the, the existing tooth right here and hit adapt model. I'm going to skip this step. We'll do a tutorial, a guide on that later. And then we're done. Okay. We are ready to go to the mill. How oh, This is just awesome. And in real time, this takes me roughly about a minute and a half to design the whole thing, start to completion. Um, but with explaining it to y'all and slowing it down, it takes longer. But I hope you learned some cool things. And we're going to do some more fun uh, guides like this so that we can get you up to speed on PlanCAD Premium. Thanks, guys.